Let's get started. Your new Singer sewing machine is equipped with stitch programs that cope with all modern fabric types. All stitch types are shown on the front and can easily be selected with fast selection dials. Connecting your sewing machine. The foot controller plugs into the side of the machine and then into the wall socket. Turn your machine on here with the power switch. Free arm flatbed conversion. Your machine can be used as a flatbed or converted to a free arm. It converts into a slim free arm machine in seconds simply by removing the accessory tray. To remove the accessory tray, hold it firmly and pull it off to the left. The free arm area makes sewing hard to reach places or tubular areas like cuffs or trouser legs extremely easy. The accessory tray includes a compartment for convenient storage of all machine accessories. Covering the feed dog's darning plate. For special sewing techniques like free motion embroidery, monogramming or darning, you will need to purchase an optional darning embroidery foot. The feed dogs must be covered with the darning plate allowing you to freely guide your fabric. We recommend removing the presser foot before you slip on the darning plate. The darning plate is also necessary for sewing on buttons where you don't want the fabric to be fed by the machine. Presser foot lifter different positions. The presser foot lifter lets you set the presser foot in three different positions in lowest position for sewing, in center position for placing the fabric under the presser foot and removing it, and for changing presser feet, in highest position for removing extremely thick fabric layers. Changing presser feet. Changing presser feet is incredibly easy. Make sure the needle is in the up position. Raise the presser foot lifter. Push the presser foot release button to remove the foot. Place the desired foot on the needle plate, aligning the presser foot pin with the foot holder. Lower the presser foot lifter to snap on the foot. Changing the needle. It's absolutely important to insert the needle correctly. That means with the flat side toward the back. To change the needle, raise the needle bar to its highest position. Loosen the needle clamp screw with the flat screwdriver. Remove the needle and insert the new needle. Push the needle up as far as it can go and tighten the needle clamp screw with the screwdriver. Different types of needles are available for different types of fabrics. Stretch needles, for example, with a ball point for easy handling of stretch materials or an extra strong jeans needle for convenient sewing of denims. Needles should be changed regularly. It is recommended to use Singer brand needles in your Singer sewing machine. To wind the bobbin, first place the thread on either of the vertical spool pins. Now, bring the thread to the front of this guide, maintaining tension on the thread with your right hand and wind it clockwise around the tension disc. Put the thread end through the bobbin like this from the center and then out through the hole on the bobbin. Place the bobbin onto the bobbin winding spindle. Push the bobbin to the right. This will declutch the hand wheel, which means that your needle won't go up and down while you are winding the bobbin. Hold the end of the thread and then step on the foot controller. The bobbin will begin to fill. Stop to trim the thread tail. Continue to fill the bobbin. It will stop when it is full. Push both the bobbin and spindle to the left. This will re-engage the needle automatically for sewing. Now, remove the bobbin from the bobbin winding spindle, then cut the thread.
Bobbin Insertion To insert or remove a bobbin, make sure the needle is in its highest position by turning the hand wheel toward you. Remove the accessory tray from the machine and then open the hinged cover. Pull the bobbin case tab and then remove the bobbin case. Insert the full bobbin and pull the thread to ensure the bobbin turns in a clockwise direction. Pull the thread through the slit and under the finger. Hold the bobbin case by the hinged latch. Now insert it into the shuttle, making sure the metal finger on the bobbin case is vertical and fits into the groove of the shuttle. Threading. Your machine is very easy to thread. First, raise the needle to its highest position by turning the hand wheel toward you. Continue turning it toward you until the needle slightly begins to go down again. This will raise the take-up lever to its highest position. Raise the presser foot lifter. Place the thread on either of the vertical spool pins, with the thread coming off the spool like this. Bring the thread from the thread spool around the upper thread guide like this. As you do this, it is helpful to hold the thread between the spool and the top thread guide with your right hand. Thread the tension by leading the thread with your left hand down the right channel and then up the left channel. Pass the thread from right to left at the top of this movement so that the thread slips into the slotted eye of the take-up lever. Bring the thread downward, then slip it behind the needle clamp guide located just above the needle and thread the eye of the needle from front to back. To make sure you have threaded the machine correctly, refer to thread tension. Bringing up the bobbin thread. Before you start sewing, you will need to raise the bobbin thread. To do this, hold the upper thread with your left hand. Turn the hand wheel toward you, which will lower and then raise the needle. It is important that the hand wheel moves forward or toward you, not backward or away from you. As you turn the hand wheel, lightly pull the needle thread. The bobbin thread will be drawn up through the hole. If your bobbin thread doesn't want to pull up through this hole on your machine, make sure the bobbin thread isn't caught by the hinged cover or the accessory tray. After pulling up the bobbin thread, place both threads under the presser foot toward the back. Thread tension. The bobbin thread tension can be tested by removing the bobbin case and bobbin and holding them suspended by the thread tail. Jerk it once or twice. If the thread unwinds an inch or two, the tension is set correctly. If the thread doesn't unwind at all, the thread is set too tightly. If the bobbin case drops too much, the tension is set too loosely. To adjust the bobbin thread tension, turn the small screw located here on the side of the bobbin case. Turn the screw left if the tension is too tight, or turn the screw right if the tension is too loose. This is the thread tension dial. For most sewing projects, you can set the dial to 4. Correct tension is important for good sewing. When you sew, thread accumulating on the underside of the fabric is an indication that the upper tension disc of the machine is not threaded correctly. Remove the fabric from the machine and try this simple test. Remove the thread completely from the machine. Be sure the presser foot lifter is in the up position. Rethread the upper thread, leaving the needle unthreaded. Leave the presser foot up, then pull the thread toward you. It should pull freely. Now, put the presser foot lifter down and try pulling the upper thread toward you again. It should resist the pulling and you should feel a significant difference in the tension. If you are still able to pull the thread freely when the presser foot is down, repeat this process. Stitch selection. Your machine has a variety of basic sewing stitches from which to choose. This is the pattern selector dial on the 1408. This is the pattern selector dial on the 1409. Always make sure your needle is in the highest position when turning the pattern selector dial. 
It can be turned to the left or to the right to select a stitch. On the 1408 machine, the stitches have width and length preset. Simply dial up the stitch you require. On the 1409 machine, the stitch length can be altered using the stitch length dial. To adjust the zigzag width, use the pattern selector guide. Reverse sewing. This lever lets you sew in reverse. Straight stitch. Snap on the general purpose foot. On the 1408, select one of the three straight stitches. Each offers varying stitch lengths. For regular sewing, use this one. On the 1409, there are two straight stitch selections, center and left needle position. You can use either one for your regular sewing. For most of your sewing, you can use the center needle position. There are seam guidelines on the edge of the plate to help you guide the edge of your fabric depending how much seam allowance you want. To begin sewing, place your fabric under the presser foot, then lower the presser foot. Step on the foot controller and sew a few stitches. Press down on the reverse lever to sew a few reverse stitches. This will secure the seam to keep the stitches from coming undone. Release the reverse lever and the machine will sew forward again. Do the same procedure to finish the seam. To remove your sewing from the machine, turn the hand wheel toward you until the needle is in its highest position. Then continue turning it toward you until the needle just slightly begins to go down again. This will ensure that your threads do not tangle or jam when you begin sewing again. Raise the presser foot, leaving the needle in the highest position, pull the fabric toward the back and cut the thread with the machine's thread cutter. Zigzag stitch. Snap on the general purpose foot. The zigzag stitch is used for finishing or overcasting raw fabric edges to prevent the fabric from fraying. The presser foot must be placed along the fabric so the needle stitches along the left side of the fabric while overcasting the right raw fabric edge. On the 1408 machine, there are four zigzag options. Turn the pattern selector dial to the zigzag stitch of your choice. On the 1409 machine, turn the pattern selector to zigzag. The width of the zigzag stitch will change as the dial is turned. To achieve a satin zigzag, adjust the stitch length dial to a lower number. Other utility stitches and their applications. Multi-stitch zigzag. Snap on the general purpose foot. The multi-stitch zigzag is ideal for attaching elastic or overcasting. It's also perfect for darning tears. Reduce the stitch length for darning. Buttonholes. Your machine includes an easy-to-use four-step buttonhole. Attach the buttonhole foot. Mark your fabric with a fabric marker so you know exactly where to sew your buttonhole. Slightly reduce the upper thread tension by moving the tension dial to a lower number. For model 1409, adjust the stitch length dial in the blue range under 1 to adjust the density. Use a backing or stabilizer for fine or stretch fabrics. Notice the small markings on your buttonhole foot. These should be lined up with the top of the buttonhole drawn on the fabric. Lower the presser foot so that the buttonhole centerline marked on the fabric 
aligns with the center of the buttonhole foot. With the needle in highest position, follow the four-step sequence from one step to another with the pattern selector dial. When moving from step to step, ensure the needle is raised before turning the pattern selector dial. When sewing steps one and three, only sew four to six stitches. When sewing step two, only sew as far back as the marking on your fabric. When finished, pull the threads through to the back and tie off manually. For sewing on buttons, slip on the darning plate and snap on the button sewing foot. Position your fabric and button under the presser foot so that the openings on the button are aligned parallel. For model 1408, set the pattern selector dial to match the width of the holes on the button. For model 1409, select one of the narrow zigzag patterns according to the distance between the two holes of the button. Lower the presser foot. Turn the handwheel towards you and make sure the needle clears both opening of the button. If not, adjust the stitch width accordingly. Sew approximately 10 stitches across. When finished, pull the threads through to the back and tie off manually. On behalf of our dedicated team, congratulations on the purchase of your new Singer sewing machine.